June 17, 2010. My dad had been on a weight loss mission getting ready for retirement and he was walking nine miles to work every day and nine miles home after work. He managed to lose over 150 pounds. He had just reached his weight loss goal and was getting ready to take the kids to uh, Disney to celebrate. My grandmother passed away unexpectedly, so they delayed their trip two days. Uh, the day before her funeral, he got up in the morning, decided he was going to take a quick walk around the neighborhood before we went down to finish the funeral preparations. In the morning, I got a phone call from my mom and from the State Highway Patrol just saying there had been an accident and I needed to get to St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Youngstown. I can remember at about noon, the doctor came out to speak with us. He just said they'd done everything they could. Back in 2017, we were experiencing a lot of crashes on IR-80 and 76 in Mahoning and Trumbull counties. We had a trooper struck by a truck out on 80. In March of this year, John Pasco was killed on Interstate 680 while he was doing his job for ODOT and for the citizens of the state of Ohio. You see it every day people on the phones. Doesn't matter how many signs we put out there, how many strobe lights we have, there's always somebody at some point that comes too close to us. I, I probably see anywhere from five to 10 people a day on uh, the highways texting as they drive by me, and, uh, sometimes on crash scenes, sometimes they're just sitting in a red light. They're, they're, they're texting and driving. It's terrifying, and they'll go by you and they'll literally blow the hat off of your head. Every day you come to work could be your last you don't want to go out that way, you want to go home. And that's what really began uh, looking at what can we do to make a difference out there and how can we collaborate with ODOT to make it safer in that stretch of road for the 50 plus thousand people that travel through there every day. In a two year period we had 127 serious crashes and three fatal crashes on a very short 17 mile section of roadway. We started looking at what the cause of those serious crashes were and the link come back to distraction. With the help of John and Mike and a team at ODOT, we were able to, to really narrow down on where the problem was at. The 17 mile section of Interstate 76 and Interstate 80 is actually the epicenter of distracted driving issue in a three county area. So we brainstormed a little bit and determined that uh, the best course of action may be to come up with an actual corridor that focused on distracted driving. From about 2016 on, I was thinking and I was just writing down in the notes of my cell phones uh, sayings of, of things that I thought would catch people's attention. If I ever had the opportunity to do a distracted driving corridor, those notes that I made in my cell phone over the years were kind of a culmination of what went on the signs. Signs typically become somewhat background noise when someone drives the road over and over on a daily basis. So we have two signs out there that actually change. We're trying to keep the message fresh to keep people engaged in what the signs say. We have one sign that has a counter on it that indicates to people how long it's been since the last serious crash. I think it will be very impactful to people to see that that counter doesn't get much over 20 or 25 days. And people start to realize that a lot of people are getting hurt out on this very short 17 mile section of roadway, mostly because they're just not paying attention. We were there when ODOT opened the distracted driving corridor and uh, shortly thereafter several of our truck drivers were coming in and they were extremely excited. Uh, to see the signs up. Many of them knew the story behind the signs as it related to our business and to our family. So they got to go out there and see firsthand that as a community we're doing something step by step, day by day in order to reduce the fatalities and, and incidents and accidents related to distracted driving. What I would really like to see as an outcome of the distracted driving corridor is that people start to recognize that distracted driving is an issue. I really think that this corridor is more about education than it is about enforcement. Hopefully we'll continue to, to drive those distracted driving numbers down through that education piece. I do believe that having a corridor like this is very important, especially to me and to our community here, because this has touched us so personally. I think that, that our goal, OSP and ODOT, we want to save lives. That's it. Don't text and drive. Don't text and drive. Don't text and drive. Please don't text and drive. It can wait.
It can wait. It can wait. It can wait. Don't text and drive. It can wait.